Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to prevent broken capillaries on the face. Broken capillaries appear as dilated, thread-like projections. They're red in appearance. The medical term for these is telangiectasias. Now you can inherit these, you can be born with them, you can have an underlying medical condition where you develop these, or they can be acquired. And there are a few things that are most notoriously associated with the development of these, and there are certain behaviors, practices that you can put into place to not only prevent them from forming, but also to help them be less obvious. Now, to be clear, these are not gonna go away with anything really that you buy in the store and put on the skin. Nothing can really take them away other than procedure that you get from a dermatologist, namely laser-based treatments is just zap those little dilated blood vessels. As a side note, I have a whole video on how to get rid of prominent dilated blood vessels, telangiectasias. I'm gonna link it down below in the description box. So if you're dealing with them and you wanna know all about the different treatment options, check that video out there. One of the most common reasons for dilated blood vessels, telangiectasias, is actually cumulative sun damage. Uh, so wear your sunscreen, it will make a huge difference. Why do we develop prominent blood vessels with excessive sun exposure? Well, UVA rays, they destroy the supportive framework um, in the deeper layers of the skin, the dermis. And when we take biopsies of the skin in areas that have seen a lot of sun and have a lot of sun damage, what we actually see is a reduction in the number of healthy blood vessels that course through the skin to bring in growth factors, nutrients, and to really nourish and revitalize the skin. But we also see um, what's left behind are dilated, enlarged, dysfunctional blood vessels. And if you look at the lining of those blood vessels that are now making up those telangiectasias that you see with your eye, the lining, the cells that line those blood vessels are flattened. And so the blood vessels themselves are leaky. And so they're not doing a good job doing what they're supposed to do. So protect your skin from the sun. Sunscreen, sun protective clothing is a must. Um, especially if you are of a paler skin type, you are more vulnerable to developing these. Now, of course, when you have a lot of these, as a dermatologist, I don't look at them and think, oh my gosh, She's got a big blood vessel on her face. What a character flaw, not at all. But when I do see these, the first thing that comes to mind is the potential causes. And when I'm seeing it in a background of sun damage, it tells me in my mind, oh, this person got a lot of sun damage. That means they might be making some skin cancers. So that's how we parse those things together. It's not a character flaw though. Now, the other thing, as it relates to sun damage and dilated blood vessels, it's not just on your face. You'll often see these on the sides of the neck. In fact, there is a skin condition that happens on the neck, especially the sides, that is specifically sun damage, and it's called poikiloderma of savat. Poikiloderma of savat, you have patches of kind of brownish, reddish discoloration. You have areas where the skin has atrophied, and you have prominent telangiectasias because of sun damage, basically. The, then you can also see prominent uh, blood vessels on the upper chest, but everybody's favorite territory to forget about the backs of the hands and the forearms. So make sure you're wearing your long sleeves, your sun protective clothing, your sunscreen. Get yourself some driving gloves. You can really cut down on sun damage. Now, practicing aggressive sun protection is not necessarily, again, gonna erase the existing dilated blood vessels that you have, the telangiectasias, but it will help cut down on the formation of new ones and any treatment that you pursue to get rid of the ones that you have. Sun protection is going to be necessary to reap the benefits of those treatments fully in correcting the dilated blood vessels, telangiectasias. Cause number two is actually any kind of trauma or injury to the skin. Now, some types of trauma and injury, you know, you can't really prevent. Uh, accidents happen, things occur, but let's talk about some different reasons why you might injure your skin and the response might be development of dilated blood vessels. Picking the skin, squeezing, popping pimples, that can cause a lot of trauma in the deeper layers of the skin. And again, that's where those blood vessels are trying to bring in healthy growth factors and things. If you go manipulating, squeezing, and the like, you create a lot of inflammation. It can damage those blood vessels. They can become abnormal, dilated, and boom, you have a telangiectasia. So don't pick, squeeze your face. You know, skincare products, if they're irritating to your skin, 
That irritation, technically, I suppose, I mean, if it's really aggressive, could aggravate and lead to telangiectasias. But truthfully, it's not really that commonly encountered. But what can happen is when you have a procedure that is irritating to the skin, a side effect might be the development of telangiectasias, specifically microdermabrasion, um, where you're using, uh, it's a treatment where you have this particulates that basically sand away the skin. Uh, a side effect of that could be development of telangiectasias. Now, in the drug store, the, the, the beauty stores, the beauty stores, the skincare in the stores, because wh what store can you walk into these days and they're not selling skincare, right? I mean, even 7-Eleven has a kiosk of creams. Uh, skincare that is probably, you know, you might want to be careful with are those scrubs. Not all scrubs are bad per se, and even, even the more aggressive ones, they're not necessarily dangerous, but what can happen is people use them too much, uh, their skin is sensitive, they create a lot of irritation. The ones that are more problematic are the ones that have like, well, the walnut shell particles that have sharp, irregular surfaces. A lot of more modern formulations of facial scrubs, skincare scrubs, they use these like little uh, polymeric beads they can help, again, mechanically exfoliate the surface of the skin, but they deform a little bit, you know, they, they deform more readily, so they're not, they're not in there really wounding and, and being so aggressive as like something more abrasive. Now, um, the other scenario where you can develop telangiectasias is gonna be anything that scars the skin. Uh, skin picking can lead to a scar, and at the perimeter of the scar, you can develop a telangiectasia, you know, telangiectasia. Um, but also, you know, if you happen to injure yourself, cut yourself, uh, it can heal with a scar, and the scar can have overlying telangiectasias. Now, I have a lot of videos on this channel about different approaches and treatment methodologies, if you will, for correcting different types of scars. I'm not gonna go into all that in this video. It's way above the scope of what we're talking about to, in today's video. But one of the aspects of addressing scars, improving the appearance of scars, the cosmetic appearance, and also just, you know, scars can be very uncomfortable and they can limit mobility and cause, you know, lead to decrease in quality of life, loss of function, et cetera. One aspect of scar management is addressing any overlying dilated blood vessels, telangiectasias, and redness that often coincides with that using a, a vascular laser. So if you have existing scars, you know, no treatment that you buy in the store, things that you put on the skin, is necessarily going to get rid of those. But what you can think about proactively anytime you get a skin injury is you want to be mindful of external forces on that healing skin. That is part, not all, but part of what contributes to the final appearance of thickened, raised, discolored, and or red scars is a lot of external friction, pressure, repeat trauma. Anytime you get a type of skin injury, um, whether it be a cut, a scrape, you want to keep the area clean with some dilute soapy water and apply petroleum jelly to the area because that's going to help with healing by protecting the underlying wound bed, but it's also going to lubricate the surface of the skin to cut down on frictional shearing forces that ultimately lead to are part of why people's scars become thickened and discolored. In addition to that, once the skin has healed over, um, in the case of, say, for example, a surgical scar or even an injury that you had, you know, a cut or a scrape, if you are prone especially to thickened scars, the other thing to lean into is um, silicone scar sheets or scar gels. These have a, lot, a good track record of helping with the final appearance of a scar, including you know, cutting down on redness and telangiectasias. Now, a lot of you guys out there have a condition where you're likely to develop telangiectasias, and that is rosacea. I know a lot of you guys tune in who have rosacea, and if, you, if you're not familiar, this is a chronic skin condition. There's not a cure for it. There are certain things that trigger rosacea, and the triggers vary a lot from person to person, but with rosacea, you have a combination of bumps that are red. Those are called papules. You have a, com a combination of those, and as well as bumps that are filled with pus, but you have a background of facial redness, and initially, the symptoms start uh, with flushing and blushing, but as time goes by, that facial flushing and blushing, it turns into persistent background facial redness in addition to the bumps. And within that redness is where you're gonna see prominent telangiectasias. 
And again, there's nothing in, in the topical treatments, the stuff that you buy in the store the, and the like that's going to get rid of those, but rather the treatment to get rid of those uh, is going to be laser-based. But if you have rosacea, managing and avoiding your triggers is really, really helpful in reducing the persistent redness issue and the ultimate formation of those telangiectasias. Staying consistent with the treatments that have been prescribed to you to manage your rosacea and having a really good understanding of what your rosacea triggers are and modifying your behavior to avoid triggers. Common triggers are um, spicy foods, not just spicy foods that are hot like burn your mouth, but spices, you know, there's spicy like hot and then there's spicy like spices, turmeric, ginger, both of those can actually aggravate rosacea. Likewise, heat, hot liquids, soups, working up a sweat. When you feel like your face is getting warm, for those of you with rosacea, it can precipitate a flush. Drink some sips of cool water, apply a cool compress. This can cut down on that flushing response. Sun exposure is a super common trigger for rosacea. Protect your skin by wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen. Skincare products are more likely to be irritating if you have rosacea, cause burning, stinging, and flushing. So be really conservative when you are introducing new products, do a little test spot. You have to be really, really conservative with the skincare products that you use. Choose really mild stuff because uh, you don't want to aggravate uh, a flare of rosacea. You want to use plain moisturizers to help the barrier of your skin. People with rosacea, they have a barrier defect and that allows for more things to get into the skin that irritate an already hypersensitive skin of rosacea and lead to more flushing and blushing. So moisturize, wear your sunscreen, you do want to cleanse regularly to cleanse the skin of dirt and debris and also to help gently exfoliate the skin. One aspect of rosacea that you know doesn't really get enough attention because honestly it's a little bit unpleasant to hear about, it is those little face mites that we all have, demodex mites. People who have rosacea, they have more of them and they have an abnormal inflammatory response to them. Consistent cleansing, um, not aggressive cleansing, not over the top cleansing, but just a mild cleanser to just basically cleanse the face, helps exfoliate and ultimately can help in controlling to a certain extent the burden of those little mites. Number four, don't smoke. Smoking, smokers develop telangiectasias, especially in sun exposed areas because they have kind of a double insult going on, the UV rays doing what they do. And then the smoking kind of compounds and exacerbates those negative effects of UV by depleting the antioxidants in your skin and by destroying the collagen along with the UVA rays that weaken our collagen. And all of that, you know, it leads to the changes in the deeper layers of the skin that underscore a drop in the number of those blood vessels, as well as now these dilated blood vessels that are just not optimally functioning and, you know, are apparent. So don't smoke and, um, you know, vaping has not been around as long as smoking like cigarettes, but uh, preliminary research suggests that vaping uh, does have many, if not the same, negative consequences on the skin and skin aging as smoking, you know, tobacco, cigarettes. So, uh, you know, I would say vaping as well definitely could potentially contribute to telangiectasia. Smoking deprives the skin of oxygen too, and so you'll get this kind of rebound effect of abnormal blood vessels going on. Speaking of rebound effect, um, last thing that I want to share with you guys as far as something that can cause telangiectasias as a negative side effect is going to be the use of topical steroids. Now there is a huge uh, amount of st what's called steroid phobia out there. People are deathly afraid of top topical steroids. They're going to damage the skin and cause all of these skin problems. If you have an underlying skin condition, you are being followed by a dermatologist and they prescribe you, they prescribe you a topical steroid. Trust the process. But topical steroids, they do have side effects. So your doctor needs to be monitoring for those. Now you can buy a topical steroid over the counter. It's called hydrocortisone, 1% cream. It's very mild, uh, it's very weak, but you can develop side effects from that. And the face is really where a lot of negative side effects show up from people using 1% hydrocortisone. I suggest to the public at large, Unless you've been, if, unless your doctor has told you specifically, go to the drugstore, buy yourself 1% hydrocortisone and use it in this way on your face, don't use it otherwise, okay? Because more often than not, people 
self-treat with hydrocortisone and it can go the wrong direction on the face, especially. One of the potential adverse side effects of using steroids to the skin is the development of telangiectasias. And when it comes to the face, it's, it's a lot more vulnerable to, to developing that, as well as persistent facial redness. And tied in with that, you know, people develop what's called steroid rosacea. Um, and again, they get the telangiectasias, they get the redness. It looks, for all intents and purposes, like rosacea. Um, and it was all triggered by the use of topical steroids on the face inappropriately. That's the key word, inappropriately, meaning like not with the doctor's supervision, um, not for you know the things for which topical steroids on the face are indicated. Um, so be really careful. You know, related to rosacea is a condition called periorificial dermatitis. Also can happen with using steroids on the face as a negative, you know, adverse effect. And with that, you can get some telangiectasias as well. So this list of things that you know are caused telangiectasias, it's by no means all encompassing. Telangiectasias can, again, be part of genetic conditions. They can be acquired. A lot of people develop them during pregnancy. I'm not gonna get on here and tell you, don't ever get pregnant um, uh, because you might develop a telangiectasia. Honestly, the telangiectasias that people develop during pregnancy, a lot of times they go away on their own spontaneously. Um, people can develop telangiectasias as part of liver disease. Uh, and people also can develop telangiectasias along with other skin bumps. Uh, a lot of you guys I know on here deal with sebaceous hyperplasia. Basically, the sebaceous oil glands, they kind of uh, start growing a little bit too robustly and you develop this yellow bump. Uh, it can have an overlying telangiectasia on it. Uh, if you look, oftentimes it requires you to look really, really, really closely. You may not have even noticed it, but they often do have little tiny telangiectasias. Now, another bump on the face that definitely often has, a, has an overlying telangiectasia is a skin cancer. Basal cell carcinoma specifically, a real common, uh, it's called non-melanoma skin cancer. I have a video all about this. Oftentimes has an overlying telangiectasia to it. So um, all that to say, do not self-diagnose. Always, you know, if you have a skin concern, a skin issue popping up, whether it be telangiectasias, a bump, always you discuss with your dermatologist, what is this? Get an accurate diagnosis. Don't just self-treat because, again, some skin tumors can have telangiectasias that you may not realize that that's what it is. All right, y'all, those are some things that cause telangiectasias, behaviors you can modify to prevent them. Uh, I hope this was informative to you. Now, on the end slide, I'm gonna go ahead and link my recent video all about how to get rid of these. And in that video, I go over what we actually do to treat them, to get rid of them. So check that video out next. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.